terms of becoming a Caspa millionaire, my initial price target for Caspa is at $10. Right now, getting to $10 at the current price target is a 76X. If Caspa had a market cap of $216 billion, one Cas would be worth $10. That's an upside of 76 X. At today's current price, that would cost you around $13,000 right now. Good morning, YouTube. It's Black Tiger Miner here. Welcome you back to the BTM YouTube channel. And today we're talking about Caspa, Caspa, Caspa. So first off, uh, I think Caspa's on the verge of a price pump. I was looking at someone else's uh, Twitter page and they said it's probably not pumping until March. And I disagree with that. I do think there is a pump on the verge of happening, mainly because the uh, total uh, addresses is up and this thing about the main nets actually starting to work. And let's see if this picture doesn't get any better. It does not. Okay. Uh, this is Jim Skibum. This is what Caspa graph inspector looks like running 10 blocks per second, which is 10 BPS, which is the next upgrade. The level of innovation here on proof of work is unprecedented and changes the entire framework of what we thought was possible in crypto. So again, I'm telling you guys, nobody is doing this in crypto. This is no random meme coin, or this is nothing uh, somebody else is working on that has no application behind it. Casper has real application. It's a real project, and they're trying to change crypto. Unless somebody stops them, I think Casper will be the silver to Bitcoin's gold. And if you disagree, let's talk about it in the comments. And shout out to everyone that made the comments yesterday, especially everyone that made multiple comments. I think that was the J Fossil and I think it was Quarter Crawler or uh, J Fossil Quarter Crawler. And there was another uh, person that made multiple comments. So shout out to you guys. Thanks for your support. Thanks for tuning into the channel. Uh, I think it was Thomas Keefe. But thanks for tuning into the channel. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for making the comments. Thanks for boosting the page up. I really appreciate you guys. And I'm here for you. I want to help people so they don't lose their life savings in crypto. I made a lot of bad investments. So I'm trying to keep people from making the same mistakes I made. Right. First off. Anybody that's telling you technical analysis or telling you what's going to happen tomorrow is lying to you. Nobody knows what happens minute to minute in crypto. So there's no way they can predict what's going to happen in the future. Just an FYI there, guys. Okay, so back to it. Uh, I find it laughable that people are saying CAS will reach a dollar. Can it go higher? One dollar is like is a low 20 billion cap. This team is building what is and will be the best blockchain DAG in the world. Twenty billion is a fraction of what's next. What will go up in the next one to two years? Think bigger. And shout out to I don't know what this K sixty nine data points. Yeah, this guy's right. All right, you guys are severely underestimating Casper. Like I said previously, Casper is going to be bigger than what we think it is just from the fact of what it's going to do. Right. So we've been the entire time I've been making videos, which for some reason people are just starting to find. I don't know how that works, but I think everyone that has found them and is listening to them and it's helping you guys. There's a lot of information with Casper that's going to be useful. Once Casper hits the mainstream and people start reading it, your Uber driver tells you to start buying it. The guy at the airport tells you to look into it. Uh, your, your neighbor tells you he bought a big bag of Casper. Then people are going to start listening. But right now, everyone tuning into this channel and listening to BTM is early to the party. Yeah, I said it and I keep saying it. Things hadn't even started to run yet, and people are wigging out. Oh, my God, it's not going to get past $0.10. Cent. Oh, my God, it's not going to get over $0.12. Cent. Oh, my God, it'll never reach 
15 cent. And of course, all those have already happened. I remember people were telling us it ain't going to get to a penny. I remember people were saying it's not going to get to five cents. And clearly, we've surpassed both of those. So let me show you this video here of the price. And nothing in crypto has a chart like this. You find a better chart in crypto, show it to me, and we'll talk about it. Until then, this is the best chart I've seen. I've seen a lot of charts. Nobody's doing this, right? No other cryptocurrency is doing this. Only thing close is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin took years to do this, right? It didn't happen in a year or a year and a half. So let me know what you guys think about that. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, Casper is the army. Better yet, the Navy. Shout out to the hot boys. Um, let's see here. Go back to... Okay, so this is the big news. Testnet 11 is what we're talking about. Taking so long. Well, I got this on an actual article. But they're talking about the Testnet 11 and why it's taking so long to come out. And I have a article, but I find this picture with Mr. Bean and the Binance crash and everything else that's going on in the background. But Caspa is still holding, right? Shout out to all the Caspa holders. Remember, Caspa, Caspa, Caspa. Don't worry about the rest of that shit. Stick to Caspa, Caspa, Caspa. Okay, and this is the article. Okay, so this is Shy, uh, one of the Caspa developers. For those who are wondering why Testing 11 is taking so long, it's because the incredible rusty Casper team keeps coming up with exciting new ways to improve performance of the clients. However, these require deep and subtle changes of the code that require time and care, delaying the next public testnet 11 run. In the last few weeks, two major optimizations were introduced. And that's a good thing. Okay. Uh, I've been in IT for over 12 years, maybe 15 years. Regardless, I'm a data architect, so I know how development works. The best thing a development team can do is delay the deployment, right? If they find something to fix and they fix it before they deployment, that's telling you this is a good team. I worked on a lot of teams and the crap teams push it out, right? If it ain't working, they're going to push it out. It's going to break. and you got a whole world of problems. A team that's smart enough to know there's something wrong and doesn't release it means these guys are taking patience. So they're not going to F everything up and they're not going to throw these half-assed codes out that's going to break the system. So this is a good thing. Uh, tracking child blocks, the node maintenance for each block of list of child children blocks. That is blocks pointing at it. When a new block arrives, it should be added to the list of children blocks of all blocks it is pointed to. Originally, this list would recompute and rewrite from scratch. This requires quadrant amount of data. Yeah, that's going to take a whole lot of space. If a block has n children and the first has written n times, the second n minus one times and going on, this is a bottleneck was identified through the intense Profiling work carried out by somebody, Newman, who together with Michael Sutton designed and implemented a clever way to track block children. So basically, they're trying to organize uh, the, the uh, blocks that aren't being created. So they found a way to organize them so they'll be better efficient versus just writing and rewriting and rewriting, which is right. It's going to take a lot of space up. I'm not sure how they fixed it. You can read the details. I'll put that on there as well. But that's a smart fix, guys. I'm telling you, these guys know what they're doing, man. Um, reactable queries, reachable, reachability queries. Reachability queries is the mechanism that allows us to quickly determine whether one block is past of another block. Finding a way to do so efficiently, both terms of storage and terms of processing, is one of the hardest roadblocks. 
why many before us assume the efficient implementation is impossible. That's also a pretty good catch, right? These guys are catching good problems, right? They're not sitting around uh, playing with the water cooler and uh, chewing bubble gum. These guys are actually looking and making this better. Let's see if we can get this one to show. Yeah, so here is the Testnet 11. And this is what we've been waiting on for them to release this to prod. But if they're making fixes for orphan blocks, it might take some time. But either way, guys, don't give up on the Casper team. Things are moving forward. Just be patient. Continue to DCA in and wait, right? I'm pretty sure Casper's already made you a couple dollars. So I don't know why people are thinking it's not going to continue to work. Even with Bitcoin, every step of the way, they flooded Bitcoin. It's not going to work. It's not going to do what you think it's going to do. It's too slow. Nobody will use crypto. Crypto's a scammers. Crypto's illegal. The Hamas is using crypto. Uh, Taliban's using crypto. There's all kind of crazy stuff happening in crypto. There's all kind of crazy stuff happening in all finances. Genius. So just for that as well. Just trying to tell you guys to be patient and keep calm. Don't fall into futters or technical analysis or everybody and their mom telling you to sell your Casper. Continue to diamond hand and hold on to your Casp. So moving forward, um, I'm not sure. Let me play some of this video just because I've been looking at it for days. Should I buy Caspa, K-A-S, now? In the past week, Caspa has been showing signs of going down. We expect a small recovery within the next week as buyers buy K-A-S when prices are low. For what price is Caspa, K-A-S, a good buy? Our technical study of Caspa shows that this cryptocurrency is a good investment right now based on the way it is moving. Should you put your money into Caspa, K-A-S? Based on our price forecast, our research shows that investing in Caspa right now is a good idea. Is there a future for Caspa? Caspa has strong fundamentals, and a lot of people have invested in this coin. This means that we think the future okay, looks guys, bright so for Okay, guys, so as KAS. you can see, or as she says, the future looks bright for Caspa. And I look at the Caspa FYI dashboard. Currently, Petahash... Uh, hash rate is 106 petahash. Um, percent mine is 75.50%. Next reduction is 24 days to 139. Uh, TPS is 1.6 and 0.5. Current price is 0 0.118, down 7.1%. Uh, trading volume is 48 million. Market cap is 2.5, ranking 28. So if you can see, the volume's coming back up. We just got to get the market cap back up. And this is the address count. So I'm not sure about this Caspolytics. Caspolytics, yeah. And this is saying the address count is uh, 558,000. Uh, address count holding more than a dust balance. So I guess a dust is change. So I think if they got over a couple dollars, it counts as not dust. But if we go back to here, and if we look at top addresses, and I've been looking at this and just trying to find uh, the best matrix out of this information. This chart displays all counts of addresses that hold a meaningful balance. An address is considered to have a meaningful balance if it holds more than 1,000 simples or 0 0.00001. So I guess that would be the dust balance. This simpo filter exists to filter out addresses that hold dust balance. Well, that's interesting. So I guess we do have a useful purpose for this analytics. So this is the current uh, addresses on the dashboard. And this is showing 
400,000 addresses. So I'm not sure if you guys are following this, but addresses went from 270 to 300 to 350 to 400, right? So I'm not sure what's going on, but there's a ton of people buying Casper, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I've been following this the whole time, so I'm telling you straight up. Generally, the addresses don't pump. They don't even move much, right? From the first, I don't know, five or six months, it might go up maybe a thousand a week. From last, what is this? First week of August, uh, first week of December, it was around three something. So they've added a hundred thousand addresses in, let's say, twelve days, give or take. I'm not sure. I wish I would have been paying attention, but I'm starting to notice that these numbers are going up rapidly. So this is crabs is up 0.3% today. Octopus is up 0.3%. Uh, fish is up 0.1%. Dolphins didn't change. Sharks are up 03 And whales is 09 And I do track whale. So I think the whale was 227 earlier this week. And now it's down to 225 So we'll keep an eye on that one as well. So I don't know if they're moving addresses from a larger address to smaller addresses or if they're selling. But we'll keep an eye on that. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Uh, KuCoin is 905 million. Uh, Gig IO is 696. Mexi is 450. And I've been hearing people complaining about Mexi. Uphold is still climbing 357 million. This 245 and 157 have not changed. And we're not even sure what that is. Uh, BitGet is 157 million. Uh, this 137 million, 96 and 96. These two are new. I'm not sure. And I think this one's moving up as well. But I'm going to start tracking one, the uh, user. Uh, address counts, which are not unique addresses. They're just addresses connected to unique wallets. And I'm going to start tracking these balances better because I think I'm missing something because the numbers are moving so rapidly. But let me know what you guys think, if anybody's doing any analysis into that information as well. And this is CoinRank. So CoinRank has Caspa at 31 under Ethereum Classic. Uh, 2.6 billion. Ethereum Classic is 299. I think we were somewhere around. Where's Monero? We were right under Monero, but even Monero failed. I think we we're around 3.2 billion, give or take. And then it started sliding back. But the good thing is, Casper's starting to pump back up slowly. So let me know what you think about that as well. And this is the live coin watch. Live coin watch is saying caps is at 2.6 billion market cap. Uh, volume is 99 million today. Volume versus cap is 3.74. Um, in the last hour, it's down 2%. The day it's up 0.66%. Uh, seven days is down 13.4%. Last 30 days, it's up 35.8%. Last 90 days, it's up 164.9%. And for the year, it's up 1,685. Second supply is 21.8 billion. Max supply is 21.7 billion. 24 hour low is 11.5 cents. 24 hour high is 13.5 cents. Interesting. Interesting. And this is CoinGecko. Remember CoinGecko. Shout out to CoinGecko. They're the first person to get this ranking right. So they've been with us the whole time. So we're dancing with you guys. If you're looking for a partner or a sponsor, hey, holla at BTM, guys. I've been here. I've been telling you that. Um, price is 0.12, uh, 0.9%. And let's refresh this real quick. Because I know Live Coin Watch refreshes by itself, but
but I'm not a hundred percent sure that uh, um, Coin Gecko does. So yeah, Coin Gecko saying uh, zero point one two one, so twelve point one cent up point nine percent. Market cap is two point six billion. Twenty four hour trading volume is forty one million. Second supply is twenty one point eight billion. Max supply is twenty eight point seven billion. And this is the crown jewel of CoinGecko. It gives us a seven day high and low. Nobody else is given the seven day high and low. They just give us a 24 hour high and low, which is kind of weird because you would think they would want to give you more information. But regardless, this is where we're at. 24 hour low is 11.5 cents. 24 hour high is 12.6 cents. Seven day low is 11.6 cents. Seven day high is 14.2 cents. Trading volume is 41.2 million. Market cap is 28. Uh, ranked is 29, sorry. Market cap is 2.6 billion. Uh, all time high is 15.2 cents. We're down 20% from that, and that was 23 days ago. So we're kind of pushing the one month um, interval here. So keep an eye out for a pump coming. Pump is coming. Then we'll look at uh, crypto bubbles. Uh, uh, says for the day 1.3, the hour 0.9. Looks like for the day, not a lot is up. This KCS, I'm not even sure what that is. Uh, ADA, um, Cardano, uh, KDA. What day? I'm not even going to go with that, but KDA is up. Um, XNA is down 5%. Pepe's down 0.3. Solano's down 1.4. Bitcoin's down 1.1. Litecoin's down 1. Doge is on 1.4. Uh, Binance is up 3.7. Flux is up 1. Polymatic's up uh, 4.6. And Dot's up. And Monero is down 0.5%. Ethereum is down 1.1 and FTT, which is FTX, is up 2%. I'm not even sure where that money's even coming from, but somebody is still putting their money in FTX. I don't know why, but again, this is not financial advice. This is just for entertainment purposes. Do what you want to with your money. Uh, we'll come back to that. Okay, so for the four hour chart, uh, what's this? Uh, four hour shot. We're up to 12 point. What is that? 12.2. So I think the first resistance point is 13.5. So if we get here, wow, that's a pretty long way actually. So if we get here, that's the first resistance point. And then the next resistance point will be 14.4. So if we can break here, I think we're off to the races again. But the first one would be 13.5. Again, this is not financial advice. And I don't even believe in technicals. I'm just telling you what somebody else told me. And this is the RSI, which is starting to look like it's going up. So, yeah, we got to get the RSI up to, wow, it's low. We got to get it up to 70 or 60 range. So, somewhere in here. So, once the RSI starts trending up to here, a bounce is coming. And if you can see here, look really, really closely, we're starting to build a little bit of volume here. And you can see the MACD, is it crossing? Generally what happens when the MACD cross, it either goes up or down. And we see here it crossed, it was coming up, it crossed, and then the volume went down. Looks like it tried to cross here or it did cross here and the volume's coming up and we're looking at another crossing. So if it crosses again, what is this? So if it crosses again and the volume continues to pump, we might be on a run, a run guys. Cause you can see here cross, we got pump price went up cross pump price went up. This is in a four hour chart. Let's look at the day chart. You can see here. Yeah. We had the volume peak. The MACD cross, RSI is above 60, price pumped. 
went yellow, which means a massive pump and the volume's increasing. But then again, this is not uh, technical. I'm just going over the information and letting you know. Okay, last thing before we wrap it up. This is the Black Tiger Miner Casper shirt, right? I uh, also have this on YouTube, and I don't know why, but the YouTube price is much higher. So my daughter designed this shirt, and I got a contest for you guys. Christmas is up, so we're going to start giving shit away. Okay, the person that gets the most comments, I want to say this week, I'm sending you a shirt, right? If you don't like this shirt, tell me what shirt you want. But the person that gets the most is going to get this shirt. So let me know what you guys think about that. It's cool. You like it. You don't like it. You hate it. Either way it go, let me know because I need to start passing out some of these merchandise. And this shirt, for some reason, is much cheaper than the one on YouTube. I'll see if I can fix the one on YouTube to get the price correct. But either way it goes, thank you for your support. Thanks for tuning in to the channel. Have a happy Tuesday. And remember... Caspa, Caspa, Caspa. And let's get back to the money, guys.